She's the most famous woman on the planet, the biggest selling female artist of all time, with more number ones and consecutive top ten hits than any other female artist ever. She is, of course, Madonna. No, not that Madonna, you idiot. This Madonna. Singer, songwriter, mother, mogul, actress, activist, American icon, and the greatest pop star of all time. Born in Noesville, Michigan, home state of the motor car industry, Madonna Louise Ciccone rolled off the production line on 16th August 1958 and has been revving her engines ever since. Her mother, Madonna Sr., tragically died of cancer when Madonna Jr. was only five years old. Her father, Sylvia, raised his daughter to be a good Catholic girl and had her educated by nuns. But Madonna was always quick to rebel. Sensationally quitting college in 1978, she headed for the Big Apple with no friends, no job, and only $35 in her handbag. She survived working for Chump Change at Dunkin' Donuts and posing nude for dirty pictures. Then she began to make music. Her demo tape set the floor on fire at New York's Dance Ateria, and in 1983, she was signed to Sire Records for a bargain $5,000. Less than two years later, that's right, less than 700 days later, Madonna was a huge star. She not only had a hot new movie, successful tour, and a show-stopping appearance at Live Aid under her belt, she'd also got hitched to Hollywood bad boy Sean Penn, enjoying hit after hit after hit. The marriage, it didn't last, and neither did her luck in the movies, but the songs kept climbing the charts, and she was never far from front pages and new lovers. Today, she's a multi-millionaire mum living large in London and L.A., She's sold in excess of 120 million records, has spent over 10 years on our singles charts, and has had more top 10 hits than the Beatles, the Spice Girls, and even Kajagoogoo. She's transcended trends, seen off Poodle Pop, Bread Pop, Dad Rock, Grunge, and Assy. She's been the boy toy, material girl, falling in virgin, spiritual vamp, and un-American mom. She's outlasted all her mid-80s contemporaries and still outshines stars half her age. She's the most famous woman on the planet. She is Madonna, and this is her music. <laughs> Hi, I'm Madonna. 1984, belly button, bracelets, and big hair. Good evening and welcome to an outstanding lineup of the best in pop music. To start us off tonight, we've got Madonna and her top 20 smash called Holiday. And tonight it's a holiday of music and fun, so stick around. The original video for Holiday features a dreadlocked madge against a pink background. It was so bad it was scrapped and replaced by this stellar appearance on Solid Gold. If we took the holiday A lot of the contemporaries that I started with are not are not really around today or you know they haven't continued to work for whatever reason whether they burned out or whether they just chose to do something different so in a way I feel alone I mean for that reason but I also think that a lot of people that are really popular today came up in a really different way than I did and so in that respect I can't really relate to them either you must be my lucky star. Madonna, you just won't believe this, like a virgin. Watch this. Madonna was like a virgin until age 15. The boy who made her feel shiny and new was school hunk Russell Long.
people think that if you're a girl, you're going to be a pushover, and they can get away with more. They can um, kind of pull the wool over your eyes. You're not going to be as strong as a man in, in like getting what you want, demanding what you asked for. But um, I just surprise them when they see that they're wrong. And on the other hand, the advantages are the, um, the charms, you know, that people always fall for. 1985, Susan, Sean, and Paul. She's fresh and she's new and she's 85. She's it now. She's fantastic. I think mean, she'd be a star. She could be. She could be great. She could be a major star. She is a star. Madonna's dress is an exact replica of the one worn by man-hungry Marilyn Monroe. And gentlemen prefer blonde. It's the first British television profile of a young lady who is currently the hottest property in America. She is Madonna. And what you may not know about her is that she's now making big headlines in the film world with a movie called Desperately Seeking Susan. Susan! Good going, stranger. And you can dance. Madonna has paid a measly 80,000 bucks to appear in Desperately Seeking Susan, five times less than co-star Rosanna Arquette. She's gorgeous, she can dance, she can do everything. Sexy, sexy. I went to New York, I had a dream. I wanted to be a big star. I wanted to be famous. I wanted everybody to love me. I wanted to be a star. I worked really hard and my dream came true. A chunky Madonna sells a record-breaking 18,000 tickets in just half an hour on the New York leg of her Virgin Tour. Now that's a fat purse. Upcoming rap group, the Beastie Boys provide support. I felt like by the time I was really comfortable on the stage, the show was over. So um, it was a blur to me a bit. You know, when, whenever you're nervous and excited about something, sometimes in a way you don't even remember it, you have to think about it afterwards. Because I didn't feel like my feet were ever touching the ground. What's a nice boy like me doing in a place like this? Not the sort of girls you take home to mum for tea. They're taking part in a look-alike contest. Oh, I like the way she acts, because I think all women should be able to act like they want without being run down by men at all. She's not everything. She's worked her way up, and she's used people that way. You don't mind being sort of tarred with the brush of being, well, a bit tarty. That's the image, yeah. isn't it? I really, I don't, it doesn't bother it's me anymore. Tarty. It's sexy. Madonna appears in the movie Vision Quest as a singer in a bar. In the UK, Vision Quest is retitled Crazy For You to cash in on Madonna mania. Madonna and Penn are now an item. Romantic Sean's first date, a trip to Marilyn Monroe's grave. Next, a lavish party held by aging Lothario Warren Beatty. Also in attendance, bisexual comedian Sandra Bernhard. Hmm, interesting. Not surprisingly, it's not just teenage girls who can't seem to get enough of Madonna at the moment. Away from the teen magazines, on the top shelf at your local newsagent, Penthouse and Playboy are vying with each other to present Madonna at her least saintly. It's Virgin on the Ridiculous. We are thrilled to be able to introduce to you today a woman who pulled herself up by her bra straps and who has keeping my coat on, okay? So don't feel bad. No, I ain't taking shit off today. You might hold it against me 10 years from now. It's easy to forget if we don't hear the sound. 
Madonna's tuneful Live Aid performance is backed up by hopeless 80s hair farmers, the Thompson Twins. One of pop music's most flamboyant characters is getting married this evening and very much in private. The bride is Madonna, the 27-year-old American singer who currently has record number one and number two in the British charts. I want longevity as a human being. I want it to last forever. 1986. Stripping, seducing and Shanghai surprise. Love her or do leave her out, but there's no question at all that Madonna is the kind of star who brings a beaming smile to the somewhat drawn and wrinkled faces of record company execs. Especially when just about everything she releases is a hit, including, I'm afraid, re-releases. As with her current single, Borderline, which goes back to a very early stage of her career indeed. I did my first video to Borderline, and then suddenly I had that crossover that I had been waiting for for so long because people could see who I was, they could put a face together with a song. To me, it was like making little movies, and I've always been excited about that, so it was, it was like confining it to the three minutes of length of a song. You still in love? Yes. What does it feel like? Oh my God. It feels like everything. Mm. It feels like a big, huge hand comes a, and comes around your whole body, and sometimes it's all furry and warm and it feels good, and sometimes it's scratchy and it hurts you. <laughs> Madonna and Penn team up to tread the boards in a play called Goose and Tom Tom. Despite all their celebrity friends flocking to have a gander, it turns out to be a real turkey and lasts just four performances. In this video, Madonna, 27, plays the part of a 16-year-old that has to tell her father she's keeping her illegitimate baby. That's not her real father, of course. This is Silvio, known to his mates as Tony Ciccone. Okay, so there's this pneumatic superstar Madonna, long blonde hair, great pair of lungs, and she's just got herself a new consort, Sean Penn. Tell you what, fellas, let's put them in a movie together, a caper movie, a romp, have a bit of fun. Isn't that great? Well, no, it's not great. It isn't even good. Let's talk about Shanghai Surprise. Yeah. Are you disappointed with it? Extremely. What went wrong, do you think? MGM really wanted to make an action film, but the script was actually a very personal love story between two people. And Sean and I didn't agree to do a movie like that. We wanted to do a movie that was about a love story, not about an adventure. I'm here with the wonderful Felix for the first time ever. What do you plan to do when you get older? Um, I don't know. I'm, I want to try everything. Well, we're about to see Felix trying quite a lot of things because this is the film they tried to stop you seeing. This is the film that's going to set you alight. It's a chance to see Felix earning a crust of bread and about to kiss Madonna. 
a Stone Cold classic. The Open Your Heart video is inspired by Liza Minnelli's sexy Sally Bowles character in Cabaret. You Nineteen eighty-seven. Bums, rows, and bonkers fans. Mary Lambert, the director of La Isla Bonita, asked Madonna to star in her movie Siesta. The material girl turned it down though because there was too much nudity, and the part went to Ellen Barkin. The American rock star Madonna has arrived in Britain at the start of her first concert tour of this country. Amidst the screams and cheers, Madonna remained calm and composed with a smile reminiscent of her namesake. But pandemonium broke out as she left the building. Cameramen and fans struggled to get near her and for a time it looked as if she wouldn't make it to the sanctuary of her waiting limousine. I think we really live in an age of such technological advances that it's really easy to, to cheat and to fake a lot of things in the studio. Um, and you can't hide anything on stage. The Who's That Girl tour sees this delightfully reworked Dame Edna look. Madonna earns half a million dollars for every date she plays, including topping the bill at Wembley Stadium, the first woman ever to do so. In America, Madonna, the singer, is now hotter than ever. But Madonna, the movie star in her new Who's That Girl film, is not doing quite so well. 10,000 of her fans gathered a few days ago to catch just a glimpse of their idol as she arrived for her film premiere. I am completely awestruck. Thank you for coming, and I hope you love the movie. That girl was originally going to be called Slammer. Its title was changed because Madonna couldn't find a word to rhyme with Slammer. Hmm, fair enough. Causing a commotion nearly lives up to its name when fuming Japanese fans threaten to riot because of the rain. On December 4, Madonna files for divorce. The reason? Irreconcilable differences. However, on December 16, she makes a surprise U-turn and calls off proceedings. 1988, Broadway, Bernhard. I would love to write more and not just write music. I mean, I want to explore writing in, in, in other areas, whether that's writing a novel or writing a screenplay. I really enjoy it and, and I think I'm good at it and I would like, but I need to stop, you know, uh, doing the dog and pony show for a while to do something like that because you have to work in a really undistracted way. The career of the American rock star Madonna took a new turn last night when she made her debut on the Broadway stage in Speed the Plow. I know that you're frightened. I know what you are, you see, that's what I'm telling you. I'm frightened? I know that you are. You Honest and sincere and naive and hungry for power like everybody else. <laughs> Is she a material girl? Yes. This is my next project. <laughs> in July, bisexual comedian Sandra Bernhardt makes an appearance on Late Night with David Letterman, and her new best friend turns up to join in the fun. I think it's time to fess up and get real. Honey, anytime you're ready. I hate stuff like this. I just, <laughs> I just hate stuff okay, like this. Okay, yes, I slept I, right. I slept Shut right. up! Shut up. <laughs> David, you want to know the truth? Get your leg off of me. She doesn't give a damn about me. 
Oh, right. Is that right? She loves Sean. Well, I can understand that. She's been using me. Just to get to Sean. To get to Sean. Well... I introduced her to Sean three years ago at Warren Beatty's house. Listen to this, at Warren Beatty's house. I swear. House. <laughs> and she has been in love with him ever since. Mm -hmm. Coming up, more lesbian action, bare breasts, and a papal warning. Nineteen eighty-nine, prayers, Pepsi, and Pope. I think that it is still quite a frightening concept to um, to modern civilization. A woman who is strong and independent and successful. I think it's you know more and more it's happening and more prevalent in society. But I still think that it, when it gets down to relationships, that it still. Um, makes quite a few people uncomfortable. It's the second time in less than two years that pop chanteuse Madonna has filed for divorce from her husband, pugnacious actor Sean Penn. A spokesman for Penn confirmed the couple had separated and were seeking a divorce, but added that it was amicable. In January, Pepsi signed a $5 million deal with Madonna to star in the commercial. Then, the following day, she comes out with this. All hell breaks loose. Pepsi pull the ad, religious groups go ballistic, and the Pope tries to ban her from performing in Italy. This time, Il Papa did preach. over two million dollars to make this video becomes the second most expensive of all time after crotch grabbing wacko jacko's thriller People seem to like my music and buy my records and whether, you know, for intellectual reasons or emotional reasons, I don't really care because I think that um, music is, is such a, an, an intuitive thing and you could respond to it for all different types of reasons. Um, I, I'm not really picky about how people get into my work or why they get into it. The Jessie in question is the daughter of composer Pat Leonard. Nineteen ninety, bums, dick, and sleaze. She has a rare ability to capitalize on what is happening underground at that moment and put it over the top and make it commercial and mainstream. Strike the pose. Inspired not for the first time by gay, black and Hispanic subculture, Vogue was originally going to be a B-side. In fact, it was probably Madonna's career peak thus far. Jimmy Dean, on the cover of a magazine. Grace Kelly, Hollow Jean. 
picture of a beauty queen. Jean Kelly, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, dance on air. They had style, they had grace. Rita Hayworth gave good faith. Lauren, Catherine, Manitou, Betty Davis, we love you. Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Strike a pose, there's nothing to it. Madonna's private life has become very public property since she first became a star. First her stormy marriage with Sean Penn and now rumours of an impending marriage with Warren Beatty, the co-star of her latest film, Dick Tracy. Our relationship developed as we were working. It wasn't like we were already involved and then we started doing the movies. So it was, it was like the energy that you have when you first meet someone and you're really attracted to them but you don't know them well enough to scratch their eyes exactly. out. I think the most important thing in life is to define at least one person that you can be really intimate with. Do you think it's gonna be Warren? It could be. It could it's possible. <laughs> yeah. Madonna's lunchtime jogs around Hyde Park are so far the only events to hit the headlines. But with tonight's launch of the British leg of her controversial tour, there's plenty of room for scope. Come on. And if you don't vote, you're gonna get a spanky. Vote? Madonna didn't even register. Tell me your fears. Are you scared? This fantastically saucy video is instantly banned by MTV, who object to its entire aura. Following the ban, Justify My Love is released as the world's first video single. Poor is the man. Real-life boyfriend Tony Ward watches Madonna being straddled by top French model Amanda Cazalet. Four. Love me. That's right. Love me. I want to be your baby. Mm. Yeah. Wanting. Needing. I really feel that Madonna has plumbed the depths of hype. It's uh, less of a pop promo video, more of a, a soft porn movie. I'm open and ready for you to justify my love. To justify my love. Wanting to justify. Waiting to justify. Mary Whitehouse first brought the video to the attention of the IBA. She's accused Madonna of using sexual violence as entertainment. Oh. 1991. Masturbation. Bras. Woody. Madonna spends the majority of 91 trying to rescue her acting career taking on the part of Marie, a circus performer in Woody Allen's Shadows and Fog. The Queen and King of Pop attend the Academy Awards together. Jacko asks Madge to duet on a track of his in the closet. She politely declines. There's a nice irony in the fact that the Cannes Film Festival, an event solemnly devoted to the worship of Mammon, should have begun on Ascension Day, finished on Pentecost, and been largely dominated by frenetic visit from a self-styled Madonna. Why was she there? Well, she was launching her rock documentary, In Bed with Madonna, made during her recent world tour and featuring behind-the-scenes footage of her life, public and private, and her former lovers like Warren Beatty. They say that you can't do the masturbation uh, scene tonight, otherwise you'll be arrested. Really? In Truth or Dare, as it's known in America, Madonna allows everything and everyone to be filmed, except her frail old granny. So what's considered masturbation? When you stick your hand in your crotch. Yeah, I'm changing my show. Madonna stumps up four million dollars of her own money to complete the filming of this touching performance.
sensational. 1992, sex, sex, and more sex. This used to be a playground. This used to be. This used to be, used to be my playground. It's taken from baseball flick, a league of their own, where Madonna plays all the way May, alongside Tom Hanks and Rosie O'Donnell. Meanwhile, Madonna and French flannel merchant Jean-Paul Gaultier walk down the catwalk for an AIDS charity. What a lovely pair. Is Madonna. Isn't this book of yours just another example of you using sex to sell something? No, not at all, Jeremy. But you're just using your body to get whatever you want. Oh, I don't think I am, Jeremy. Yeah, no, on second thoughts, I entirely agree with you. Uh, what are you doing for dinner? The Crown Prosecution Service decides whether the book contravenes Britain's obscenity laws. Bookshops were already flooded with advance orders. Madonna's contribution to the literary world arrives in Britain later this month under wraps. It's a sealed item, so it's not going to shock children because we're not going to make it available for them. Uh, and it won't be thumbed through in that respect in the store. But I think it'll certainly shock Mary Whitehouse. I hope I've paved the way for, for other women to a certain extent, but I mean, it's going to, to make a, to make it real advancement, it's going to take a lot more people doing the same thing that I do. Um, you know, I don't feel like being the only um, whipping boy. <laughs> After public outrage over erotica and sex and nearly 10 years at the top, the tabloids decide it's backlash time. 1993 would turn out to be a year to forget. Boy, know, the I go. 1993. Fever, flop and pussy. Bad Girl sees Madonna's lowest chart position in nearly 10 years and things were about to get badder. Not least having to snog scary Christopher Walken. Well, when the film Body of Evidence was released in America, it was touted as the erotic thriller that would make Madonna a film star. But the publicity that surrounded its opening was less about Madonna's acting or the heavy sexual content than about the hostile reaction of audiences and critics. The press in America wasn't great. Um, people are going to see it. They did go to see it. Uh, the main observation is, you know, it was really more a lesson in the ebb and flow of celebrity <laughs> because they really went after Madonna and they were very vicious personal attacks and they didn't even really address her performance. I mean, the reviews for this film ended up about being the book, ended up about being her music, ended up about being her life. It really didn't address what they saw. Proud of everything I've done. I think certain albums were more watershed moments in my life than others, or certain things that I've done as a, as a performer, but, you know, I'm proud of everything. Madonna now resorts to a Peggy Lee cover, joining a venerable list that includes greats like Rita Coolidge and Helen Shapiro. For the first time in four years, Madonna decides to take her music to the fans, and yet again, the talk is of naked flesh. This is how the show kicks off. Nice pole control. I think that performing live is is part of what I do, and and it's part of what I do well, and and I missed it. I missed not doing it for so long. The tour manages to halt, but not reverse the backlash for the time being. Around this time, Madonna starts dating slam-dunking, cross-dressing basketballer Dennis Rodman. 
After their romance fails, he goes on TV showing millions some filthy faxes from Madonna. A load of bull, Madonna pulls, and yep, more sex. Despite Madonna only singing for, and not appearing in, the Brendan Fraser Joe Pesci film with honours, the movie still dies on impact. A mad for it, Madonna appears again on Late Night with Letterman, where she calls Dave a sick fuck, and goes on to use the expletive 12 more times. I remember... Hi. You know, all the doomsayers are saying that your career is in a slump. Okay, it's next over. question. Go ahead. Let's go. This is a bad one. Come on, defend it. I mean, the fact that... I don't have to. Let's go. However people want to think of me or describe me or, you know, you know, dissect me, the, 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 on, the only reason that I could think of that I would have lasted this long is because I'm a good writer. So, and I think people get distracted from that because of all the other, you know, tinsel that goes around being a performer, you know. Secret becomes Madonna's 35th top 10 single, a feat unequaled by any artist anywhere ever. Meanwhile, her hoop dream romance with Rodman over, she supposedly turns to handsome British physician, Dr. Timothy Willocks. It's said Madonna is beguiled by his hair. In actual fact... I got this bracelet from Carlito, see? An ID bracelet with my name on it. Where's that from? Carlito. Is this your special someone? Yes. This is my special someone. He's very shy. I've always been in love with you. Take a Bow dramatically fails to reach the UK top 10, a first for Madonna since 1984. Ironically, this tune becomes her biggest ever hit in America, staying at number one for seven. Count them, seven weeks. She might be simulating sex in the video, but at home, her and Carlos the tackle Leon are doing it for real. Madonna Julie announces she's pregnant. Coming up, spanking, babies and felts. Brits, hits and tits. For the first time in oh such a long time, and in my opinion it's been far too long, we're glad she could make it, my old flatmate, Madonna. Despite never winning a Brit award, Madonna appears at the ceremony for the first time. This year she loses out on best female artist to lesbian crooner Katie Lang. Bedtime story single is written by temperamental Icelandic songstress Björk. I never had much time for Madonna, up until she started wearing that spiky metal bra. Until then, I found her work completely pointless. It's all about sex these days. Now, that's what the kids want. They want to see everything. In her case, they have seen everything. So what next? Oh, Can we have an intelligent question, please? Yeah. Uh, Dennis, BBC, uh, you've had most of your anatomy photographed. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if you, if you thought about maybe bringing out a book and letting us see a few internal organs, possibly your kidneys, uh, fallopian tubes. Pooch Chiquita. You held me down and tried to make me brace. Press yourself, don't worry, press yourself. Did I say Human nature is Madonna's answer to the press weasels who savaged her sex era antics. She's determined to have the final word. Absolutely no. Regrets. You'll see somehow. You'll see Madonna in two film cameos, alongside top Hollywood actress Amanda Decadene in Four Rooms, where Madonna plays a witch looking for a man's semen. She also plays a singing telegram who gets to moon Harvey Keitel in Blue in the Face. Nineteen ninety-six. Oh father, oh mother, oh sister. My earliest influences were, were teachers 
who all kind of took me under their wing and, you know, urged me to, to read, mostly to read, and encouraged me to be curious um, and gave me confidence. Um, I, I'm not really sure why they did. I think maybe some of it had to do with the fact that I didn't have a mother, and I think they sort of took this maternal role in my life, but they were all brilliant women. Not only does Oh Father fail to go top ten, but Madonna also appears in a rare Spike Lee flop, Girl 6, where she plays the owner of a phone sex operation. The pop star Madonna has given evidence against a man who's on trial accused of stalking her. Robert Hoskins was shot and injured by Madonna's bodyguard last May after allegedly trespassing on her estate in the Hollywood Hills. Arriving at court, hidden behind her limousine's heavily tinted windows, the self-proclaimed material girl was clearly a reluctant material witness. Her appearance here came only after the judge threatened a $5 million fine if she failed to answer the subpoena. The man who repeatedly threatened my life is sitting across the room from me, she said. I feel we are making his fantasies come true. For this Bob Hoskins, it certainly wasn't good to stalk. So give me one more chance. Madonna gave birth to Lourdes Maria Sissoni Leon at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles just after midnight. From the moment the child arrived, weighing in at six pounds nine ounces, she was the center of media attention. You must love me. You must love me. Evita was a remarkable woman, and I have an enormous amount of respect and admiration for her. I think the most amazing thing about her life story is that she came from nothing and rose to such power and had such a great influence on the country. And when I found out a little bit about her, I wanted to know more, and the more I knew, the more I wanted to know. I urge you all to form your opinions after you see the movie. You must love me. Over 20 years after 70s songsmiths Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber coughed up the grim rock opera of Vita, Madonna had finally got her wish to play Mrs. Perron. 1997, Evita, Evita, Phelps. Don't cry for me, Argentina. By the first week of 97, both the film and this single are riding high in the charts. All through my wild days, my mad existence. One of the year's most eagerly awaited films, Evita, has had its world premiere in Los Angeles. Even by Hollywood standards, this was a very special premiere, held at the Shrine Auditorium, usually home to the Oscars. And it was special not least for its star Madonna, who had pursued this role for a number of years and lived up to her reputation as a show-stopping dresser. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Absolutely. What made it so hard? Well, because I had to do everything I've ever done in my entire life, the best I've ever done it. Madonna, for goodness sake, and she says she's sick of talking about Evita. I've got presents for the baby. Oh, goody. Yes, and they're designer presents. What do you think of them? Well, I'm, I'm confused because it says Teddy Boy and, and, I, and I have a girl. Yeah, we thought it'd be here. They're very butch, these clothes. Yeah. She likes frilly dresses. Is she a frilly girl? She's so feminine, you can't imagine. Did you find breastfeeding as easy as it's supposed to be? Because I didn't. Yes. Did you find she just latched on immediately? Yes. Oh, I used to kind of have to scrunch my nipple into a thing and then <sighs> approach perfect strangers and say, could you just hold my breast a minute while I put the baby on? It was kind of a two-handed, three-handed job I used no, to No, I think I've just managed on my own quite fine. Madonna, thanks so much. Thank you. Wouldn't no, thank you, you Vanessa. So what happens now? So what happens now? Thankfully, the last release from Avita, Madonna spends the rest of the year away from the limelight with Lourdes. 1998, Frozen, Orbit, and a Johnny.
If you haven't seen her live on television for years, the new single, Frozen, I'm delighted to welcome the unique, the wonderful Madonna. Always choosing her collaborators wisely, English knob twiddler Bill Orbit adds his own magic, setting off a tidal wave of trouser wetting critical acclaim. If you put it out there that what you want to do is work with people that are cutting edge and do interesting things, that then those things will naturally gravitate towards you anyways. And I, you know, luckily I have a record company as well, so lots of really new and interesting things come my way anyways. And oftentimes I will hear something and just think, not only do I enjoy them as artists, you know, personally, I, but also I would like to work with them myself, so. A lot of times, that's how it evolves. I'm not the only collaborator on it by any means. I never have been. I think people have picked up on my, my involvement to, to a degree because of the fact that I represent a certain genre of music, which she's decided to embrace. You know, it's not like I came along and said, here, let's go here and let's change your sound. I mean, she'd already decided to, to go to this place, and I happened to be right there, and I was fortunate that I was, you know, ready to kind of come up with, a, with, with some you know, solid block-rocking tracks. Ray of Light was originally penned by British hippie Dave Curtis in 1971 as a song called Seferin. It never made it as a single, but thanks to Madonna, Dave has now pocketed a cool quarter of a million pounds in royalties. Now that's good karma. The point of that song was it was like a reflection of time, a reflection on a time in my life where I felt that I put my work and being, you know, what I doing what I do for a living in, in front of anything else, in front of relationships, in front of friendships, etc. And so that's what I meant when I say I traded fame for love. I mean, I gave this up for this. Um, but it was a reflection and it was a realization about what's important in life. So. It's not really fair to say, will I ever trade in the opposite direction? Because I, 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 I know what's important, and that is a statement about knowing what really matters. Always one to use the media cleverly to coincide with the release of the Ray of Light album. Madonna allows us the first official glimpses of daughter Lourdes. left must be just sort of answering critics is that is that does that well, ever motivate in terms of work that's not all that's left what drives me is that I love what I do and I know that the criticism is part of the package um, and at the end of the day I think if everyone just universally decided to like me I would probably at this point think that I was doing something wrong you know I think a bit I think I think rubbing people the wrong way is to a certain extent is a good thing rubbing people the wrong way is a good thing mm -hmm. It's a good note, I remember that. In August, Madonna turns 40. She celebrates at a Paris bar co-owned by John Malkovich, Sean Penn, Johnny Depp and uh, Mick Hutton. Coming up, movies, music and Punani. Freaky dancing, it's groovy, baby. 
Now, Madonna has reinvented herself again. We've had the sexy phase, the religious phase, the Indian phase, and now this is the, uh, I think, the Japanese scary phase. By now, Madonna is seriously dating Lock, Stock director and professional cockney Guy Ritchie. They meet at some soiree organised by Mr and Mrs Sting. It's quite mad, but isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, okay, but you know yeah. what? Yeah. In her defense, every time you do something new yeah. that you haven't seen in a long time, people hate it. Yeah. And then you guys are going to be doing the jerky dance in six months. Yeah. I'm seeing jerkiness already. <laughs> can, I can you do, do the jerky yes. dance? No, I can't, but I'm good. Yes. So, Cher, do you, do you like this one? Because everyone's very quick to criticize Madonna, aren't they? We're yeah, all I mean, I, I just have down. to go with it, so I'm going <laughs> to. I've been in the music business 16 years. This is my first Grammy, and uh, well, actually, I've won four tonight. But you know, it's worth the wait and all that. I'm constantly looking for new sort of cultures and ideas to inform what I do. At the end of the year, Madonna and Guy celebrate the millennium in Miami at Donatella Versace's party. Madonna leaves as soon as Jennifer Lopez walks in. Report. Obviously, being in Europe versus being in America, it's a very different feeling when you're in Europe because you get much, a much greater sense of history and things that c came before you. Um, and I think, in general, people have a tendency to be much more aware of history when people in Europe do, whereas in America, everyone seems to be cut off and oblivious because, you know, because they're American. So Madonna, the most successful female artist of all time, but is she the best? Emma, where do you stand with Madonna? I used to love her, actually, when I was young. I used to have parties and we all used to have to dress up as Madonna. Um, but I was just saying, I'd, I want to know which one is the real Madonna. I, I want to know who she is. But well, what do you think she is, then? I don't know. <laughs> do you think she's a bit mad? Well, another week, another premiere, and this time it's a biggie. As Madonna arrived at the do, looking a little nonplussed, I have to say, the gossip was about babies, her own being very imminent. So, pregnant in real life, pregnant in the film. I guess life imitates oh, art sometimes. I'm pregnant with your baby. Nice faint roots. The feelings and emotions that a child provokes in you is going to influence you if you're writing from your heart, then you go inside your heart and, you know, locked inside that chamber is, you know, all those feelings that you only get when you have children. On August 12th, Madonna gives birth by caesarean section to a baby boy. Madge and Happy Father Guy decide to call him Rocco, after the Italian for a rock. He's good as gold. He's, he's about half the size of me. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if you know, but they don't do a lot when they come out. They just sort of stare at you. But, uh, yeah, it's good as gold. Does he look like his daddy? He looks like my daddy, which makes me a bit suspicious. I think you become much more hopeful with children because you see the world through their eyes and they look at everything so with so much purity and they're not jaded and cynical and you have a tendency to become that way sometimes, you know, the older you get, especially in this business. So, in a way, they kind of help you shake the rug out and get all the dust off and kind of look at life anew again. You know, if my daughter or my son wanted to be a singer or, or a songwriter or whatever, of course I would encourage it. I would encourage them to do anything they wanted to do as long as they were serious about it. Is you Madonna? You my driver? Is you Madonna? Your Babylons look less big than they do on the telly, but I still definitely would. You wish. I do, actually. Teaming up with Gallic Wonderboy Mere Ways, music becomes Madonna's tenth number one single. Only Elvis, the Beatles, and saintly Sir Cliff Richard have had more. Stick that up your leprechauns, Westlife. It's a very specific kind of humor in England that is uh, compatible to mine, because um, oftentimes I think that people in America don't understand my ironic sense of humor. 
She has consistently produced work that is worthy of masturbation. So big it up for the foxiest woman on the planet, my main bitch, Maradona. At 42, Madonna is still looking and sounding the business. Quite rightly, she wins Best Dance and Female Artist categories at the European Music Awards in Stockholm. Great performance, Madge, but it's those T-shirts that are causing all the headlines. What was I trying to say? I don't, I mean, in a way, I want to be mysterious about what I was trying to say. So, um, but I, I will say that, you know, it's my nature to sort of go against the grain anyways, and whenever I feel like people are getting picked on, um, I always want to support them. <laughs> The whole of Brixton was at a standstill last night as the material girl herself took over Brixton Academy for one of the most hyped concerts of the year. You just have to look around you to see that she's turned London upside down for the night. Holiday! Come on, put your hands together! Celebrate! Holiday! So after all the hype, did everyone still cherish the first lady of pop? Oh man, she rocks. Madge is the best. It was um, incredibly nerve-wracking to be back on stage after, I don't know, I don't even know how many years it was since I did a proper show. Um, but I was, I was nervous for a zillion reasons, mostly because of that, but also because I'd never performed any of the music live from my new record, so... Um, um, I had really sweaty hands before I went on stage. Don't tell me to stop. I'm really proud of my new record and I just feel like the combination of sounds in the record are, to me, a perfect reflection of, of how I feel as a person because there's a part of me that's really down to earth and then there's a part of me that's just sort of, you know, spiraling up into the clouds and I just feel like it's a perfect sort of um, summation of my personality and also very reflective of the times. I think that, you know, we're being sucked forward into this age of technological advancement with computers and the internet and stuff and then, but then there's also the desire and urge to, to go backwards, to, to hold on to something, to be close to the earth. Love isn't true, it's just something that we do. Tell me everything I'm not, but don't ever tell me to stop. Don't you ever tell me love isn't true, it's just something that we do. Don't you ever tell me. That's about it, really. But that's a lot. <laughs>